Hey guys, we're west of Phoenix, Arizona, the White Tank Mountains here, and I'm, I'm with my dad. I've been excited to get him on film for a long time because he's just been having these great adventures and done some amazing things with his e-bike. So what are we looking at here, Dad? So we're going to go out and ride today, but uh, I retired this year just in time for COVID. And Congrats! And, <laughs> Finally! And, yeah. And, and working you know, hard. And did, did the RV thing because that was something that you could do. And e-bikes really worked out really well because a lot of people have, you know, RVs and then they tow behind a Jeep or a car or something like that. And we want to do that. But, I, you know, I don't want to drive anything that's particularly that big. And so sure. instead of driving, you know, tow in a jeep we put the mount and um and put e-bikes on the back which it which is great because if you think about all the places you go with uh with an rv you tend to go to the beach or the mountains or the desert you know we're in the desert right now but all of those places it would be nice to have a jeep but instead of a jeep having a bike with a fat tire it's a good trade you know this this winter i took about a month and went traveling in the deserts around california I started down south at Anza Borrego, then to Joshua Tree, then the Mojave Desert, then uh, the, the uh, Death Valley. In a lot of places, even though this isn't, you know, I, not- Yeah, if we I, step back for a second. It, 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 even though this isn't a giant RV, there was a lot of places I couldn't go because it was too long. And so huh. where there was restrictions on length, I was able to park it and go on the e-bikes. The e in in uh, Anza Borrego, there was a, uh, uh, some volcanic lava tubes and it was a, a Jeep trail. It was like six miles out there. Huh. I wanted to go, I couldn't get there with this. And so I'm out on the e-bike, there's guys with Jeeps and, and I got to see it there's there's several neat locations that the e-bike helped and so i was excited about that and it's a good trade versus um you know getting a jeep I, and that's sort of why I so i want to you know mention here that i've been doing ebr for like 10 years now and yeah. I, occasionally you know i get these bikes demo bikes or something borrow them from a shop and i'll bring them home and yeah. You got a taste of that. I got to try the bikes. And, and a lot of those were hybrids with yeah. kind of the skinny tires. Yeah, my wife and I rode bikes. And, and so what we discovered, if you think about what we're doing now, one of the challenges, you know, we, we spent time in Wyoming and we're out on gravel roads and with a narrower tire, even, you know, even a medium tire, it's, you know, it's unstable. And sure. so having something with a fat tire would be great for, you know, if you're at a campground on a forest trail or if you're at the beach in deep sand or if you're out in the desert in yeah. deep sand. Yeah. <laughs> or your, you know, the rocks and the foothills. And so having a, a big fat tire allows us to kind of go where you want to go. Or, if, you know, maybe you're at the campground and you just need to go to the store or something. So it's, you know, it's it's versatile like that. And so yeah. it's, it's basically the second vehicle for us outside of this. I remember the one other use case. It's kind of along those lines. But you guys were out on some other bikes and it seems like uh, maybe she got hung up in the train tracks at one time. Well, you know, if you're if you're crossing tracks or a curb or something and you're going in parallel, you, you need to go across. If yeah. you got a skinny tire, you, you can, you know, you can, you know, it can it can you know knock you off and so having a, a big you know a bigger tire and a more stable bike it, it's a lot more forgiving and so you know everybody can use a little yeah, bit more, yeah. for, more, right. more forgiving well, and that one of these is a step through especially now as we get closer to that i a, a couple other things that i thought were neat about the the rv he chose i, I remember you were like i want to do some boondocking and you got yeah. some solar panels on it a, a lot of the stuff that we do, you know, I was, I traveled a month on the deserts and I was only at a campground for two nights out of the month. Wow. And the rest of the time it was out on the desert and we've got solar and then really low consumption of power. But, you know, you're out on the desert, you, you got, you still got internet and all these. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. You, here but, we got, I got to show uh, the, yeah. there's a satellite thing on top, but yeah. I guess you didn't like the satellite. So you got these like uh, uh, hotspots? Well, it's, it's cellular antennas. And so we've got cellular Wi-Fi and a couple different networks. So wow. Wow. Even out in Death Valley in the middle of nowhere, it was surprising that you could, you know, you could get self-service. And so, you know, you're, you're, you know, watching Netflix or Amazon Prime while you're cooking, cooking dinner, you know, it's, it's not, not roughing it too much in, in internet, but um, it, it, it works. It's, it's, it's comfortable and we can do what we want. Well, I'm big enough that you had a couple of slides so you, you don't get too much cabin fever. And I noticed you've also got the, uh, the wheelie bar down here and there's like a riser for your your hitch maybe we can come over here and you can 
you know, tell me about some of this, because you got a great setup. Well, on this particular one, behind the rear wheels, the it overhangs quite a ways. And so if you get, yeah. the, get the steep curve, sometimes it can, you know, skid. And so you get the little bar, the wheels just in case. And huh. you know, what, yeah, the e-bikes are even further back and I didn't want them to, to drag. And so, you know, there's the standard rack, but we, we mounted it even a little bit higher so to make sure that it never never rubs and so it works great the only the only drawback is when you're loading you got an extra four inches but you know yeah. if you take your with two people it's easy and one you just you know you just have to have a little bit of a technique but it works i've done it myself multiple times and yeah worked out just fine so the, the big drivers were one you know it's like the, the things that i consume were the big tire it's yeah the stability the, the shock on the front was great uh -huh. you know having the suspension uh seat post shock is is nice so between the two of them it's very comfortable and, and it has sort of an upright riding position so you know if you're on vacation you want to be looking around and and see what's around you so the upright riding position the comfort was high you know um you know it's very versatile with racks and stuff you can do what you want because a lot of times it's meant to be sort of a station wagon if you're camp someplace and you need to go to town and get yeah. stuff get stuff you can throw it on the back you got a light you know, when well, you mentioned town i mean we got the reflective tires on these ones with the puncture protection and and they actually have lights built in but you love lights so that we got some fun things to yeah, show later yeah yeah is that you know and so yeah for for me it's like you know it it, it had the, the the core elements which were neat and were reliable and the batteries we could share and, and all that's the parts. a big thing yeah you wanted yeah. to get two of the same brand right the parts were the same my you know my wife has the step through mine's a little step over um, at first you look and it's like, well, gee, the bikes, you know, it seemed, especially with the big tires, it's like, this is a big bike. It's kind of intimidating, but <laughs> yeah. you get on it and it's like, it's really comfortable. It works well, even in the mountains on the trails that I want, you know, it, it's it works surprisingly, surprisingly well, you know, it, it's not like a rock opera, little mountain bike that you're, yeah. but that's, you're you know, not catching I'm, air. I'm, I'm not that guy. <laughs> you're not, not that, that guy. guy. I'm not that guy either. So it, it worked out really well for us. Huh? Well, they look good on this, uh, this rear rack. And one of the things that you told me is like the first time you went out, you'd, you had the suspension unlocked and the bikes were kind of moving around, right? So, that, so one of, you know, kind of the learning, I had the, the, sh the shock was unlocked. And so the, the front shock was pumping, <laughs> which was making it move back and forth. And this, this is adjustable for the length of the bike, but the bike was pulsing and you could see that it had, had moved back and forth. Hmm. And, and so, you know, one of the learnings, you know, in terms of the, the mistakes I've made, you know, one, you know, lock out the shock so it, yeah. it stays stable so that's better too i've got some neat motion sensor lights on it that are activated when the bike moves and it's like well it moves when we're driving and so i yeah. turn, turn the lights off so you don't run that down especially if you're driving for a week because sure. at some point they they write down and 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 some neat tricks in terms of you know it's the back of an rv and so there's a lot of dust and so at first i didn't cover them and you get a lot of dust all over the bike and it's messy and so we went to putting a cover on but you know the wind whips around too and so the cover we've got is a real nice cover it works for both bikes the big bikes hmm. but then we have a, a bungee tarp it's sort of like the spider web thing you'd see in the back of the truck and we put that over it over the um, tarp over the tarp huh. and so and it holds holds the the tarp tight so it doesn't flap around in the wind oh. and you know you think it's like well you know you're you're out there you know i was out for a month and it got the bike on the back the battery's off so i'm, I'm okay that way i lock the bike i have a folding lock where i lock you know i lock the wheel on the outer bike yeah uh, you have a long cable lock where i you know lock all of up in the wheels and, and like lock it to the hitch um so it's kind of secure and then it's wrapped in a tarp and then it's wrapped in a bungee so People, they kind of don't know what you got. You know, anybody could defeat it if they wanted to. Sure. But it would take a little bit longer. It's like, well, you got to go and peek under the bungee, peek under the tarp, figure out, is this really, you know, worth stealing? Am I worth yeah. risking getting in trouble for? And the first one with the big lock, that's, you know, that's a pain, you know, and they're all connected. So can you lift them both? And, you know, how much time hmm. are you going to screw around with it? So you, that's a good point. You, you just try to make it a little bit harder. So, and so far it's worked. So, yeah, they look good. And so all the dust on these is just from your trail rides and stuff. Oh, and I, I was, you, you know, there's this other conversation we had when you were looking at bikes and there are a lot of really cool mid drive bikes, but it was like, well, one with the throttle, one that if it did get busted or stolen, you, you could replace it a little bit easier, the modular batteries. And then, you know, we've got like a derailleur 
your guard here and it actually looks like you've put that to use a little bit <laughs> so taking... on the, the desert i went on some trails where it was pretty rough it was off road and so having the the, bat, the guard here um you know we were off road and so on, on my my grips you know i was beating the crap out of there i went on a railroad track um, trail that was very long and you're going back and forth over the ties and so and the ties are surprisingly tall and so there was a lot of times where you're banging hmm. i also you know put you know there's sort of an aftermarket bash guard down there because there's oh, that's some, cool some cabling below and like, you got a place to mount it like I'm, I'm often saying that that could be for a bottle but yeah. your your pack here i think there's a couple places and then you know I, i'm skipping ahead but tell me more about this bash yeah. guard thing because so that's that was just in case and you know i was off road and i I thought gosh you know is that gonna really get bashed up we can we can look at it you know i was surprised when i looked it doesn't look like it's taken a lot of hits i just didn't want to mess up any of the electronics so it's you know it looks like most of the most of the abuse came down on the crank so yeah. i was pleased you know i haven't been particularly baby in it and i haven't washed it or anything since it was out on the the desert so it's still running well have you have you broken any chains or had any no. derailments you know I mean, I've you gotta to... derail your guard it's yeah. this is a guide here so this actually protects the chain ring and it keeps the, the chain the from chain, the chains never come off that's um, nice I had to, you know i had to adjust you know take a little tension out of the cables on the gears and then i was using the brakes a lot and so <laughs> yeah you know, i had to, you know i noticed they were getting soft so i had to dial those back up to get the pressure back but it's what, what you're talking about what's so cool about you know most bikes have this but see this is a little barrel adjuster and right. so over time as the cable settles in some people say oh it's cable stretch but these wires really don't stretch a whole lot it's actually that they settle and so you know in this case they're using jaguar which is nicer and you can kind of um, you know, turn to the left and that it's, it's loosening it and it stretches out the housing. And so you're counteracting the settling. Just a quick tip for people. You don't even need tools like out on the. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have some simple bike tools, but you know, I was, you know, it was enough to just do it up on the handlebars to, you know, take enough adjustment out where on the trail I was feeling. Okay. Again, love that. You know, and so now after a month, if you're like, okay, I need to, I need to come in clean and get all the dust and, you know, <laughs> clean it up really good. And then, you know, grease the chain and, you know, get it back but this is sort of the as is condition after being on the road for a month well how much do you think you put in this like how much weight because these are pretty you know this is rated probably 55 pounds the well, rear rack you know so that the bike on you know what i've got in there i've got some paper i've got my first aid kit for out on the trail <laughs> i've got my uh you know and these stayed in there even though i lifted up i got the really long you know this is the cable that's big enough for both bikes to the hitch uh-huh and then you've got the folding you know the avis you know this oh, is the, the heavy super duty one yeah, yeah. and you know and, and i lock the first one you know i lock the rear wheel to this it's it's only large enough to kind of go through here so it's like well you can't ride it and they're all wired together and it's wired to the frame so it's like well okay and that was the loop through it yeah. puts the cable through this lock so this is the i think it's a Thule t2 xtr or something heavy duty with the big trays here that fit the fat tires and they've got that arm that that grabs the tire instead of the middle of the bike because otherwise you need a crossbar adapter i mean this is do you remember how much this hitch was i uh, am <laughs> the, the, the rack i think it's like 600 bucks 600 something. bucks 600 cheaper than like. a jeep though right that well, was the it, point yeah, it's all relative yeah because then you know, you've got the weight of pulling a jeep around and, and doing, sure. doing this stuff and so it, it takes a little bit to get it set up the way you want people with rvs it's like well bikes are big there's folding bikes but if you look it's like well you folding is do you have a cargo compartment big it's enough big you'd enough, have to have yeah. a really big rv to do that or sometimes people have the jeep and they fold the bike inside the jeep and so now you have the jeep and the bike and huh. so you know it, it'd be nice to have everything but different you know, strokes for different folks you know, i guess but either. i'm i'm digging it i mean there's a lot of stuff here that you did that i hadn't thought about like raising this up and uh, the rack that you got uh, a lot of my racks have been kuat and they've worked pretty well but yeah. you know it's sometimes there's extra adapters some of them have the ramps and stuff so you were talking about how you the, lift the baskets are nice you know the ratchets to be able to take this down you know and keep those keep those tight even with the fenders on yeah you know yeah. it's like you know because it's like there's a question sometimes can you do that but it, it's worked fine it has a built-in cable lock but that's the kind that you can kind of defeat and the cable it's not super long and I need to bring it back. And so 
I, I haven't used that. I just used the big one where I can thread it through and, and make it a little bit more of an obstacle course for somebody that's going to steal it someday. But the ratchets have been nice. These have been nice. You know, once you learn the technique to get it on and off, they've been stable. I haven't really had problems shifting. So I, I'm, I'm super pleased with that, with the cover, with the bungee thing, because it's, it's, you know, it's not flapping around. I've talked to people with RVs and they've, you know, their covers have gotten ripped up in the wind. Oh, yeah. It's flapping or you get something thin. And so then, and it keeps them, a little, you know, quite a bit cleaner. Sure. And it's still dusty. But I, and it, well. you installed an extra camera here so you can keep track of it while you ride and make sure you haven't lost anyone. Yeah. You know, the backup camera kind of aims down so you can, you know, while you're driving, you can see, you know, is it, is it shifting? <laughs> How are we doing? Is, is it still, is it still there? So what, tell me about these things there's up here. Two different things that, um, on the front. There's a, a mount for their front basket, but those four connecting points, there's a, basically it's a square mounting plate that allows you to put bottle cages on. Hmm. Um, so it, 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 it attaches really well, easily in the right position. The people that make that mount, they set the screws so the bottles are straight up and down. Yeah. You know, so you can see the holes that oh. the, the stock rack has the bottle straight up and down. And even with a medium bottle, you know, it starts to hit on the on the thing. The handlebar. Yeah. So I, I changed the holes so I could I could tilt the bottle cage back. Hmm. And so now with a medium cage, you can steer and not, not you know, that not was interfere. smart. That was really smart. I mean, Reese and Mueller have done this, Bulls have, and they, yeah. and a lot of them go straight, straight up, up, just like you're saying. So and, this was smart. You know, and I've got, a, you know, I've got access to a shop so I could, I could do that. You know, my wife, she, she likes her bottle down, but sometimes if you're in the desert, you need a couple bottles. Multiple. And yeah. so she uses the one here. If, and, and that's the second there. I have my two on there because the primary one's underneath, which is really hard to get to. Yeah. And that's, that's worked out really well the and angle. the shop did threaded holes for you is what you're saying i did that you did I, that I, I, yeah i've you got access them. to a metal shop so hey I, you know, so not everybody has the taps but it's like you know somebody's going to figure this out that you know yeah you know it's popular you know or you know i'm taller the, the other solution you could put a riser on your handlebars mm -hmm. and fix it that way because yeah. The, the the height of the handlebars i needed higher bars anyway which is going to be um, we'll talk about that once the bike's yeah, off the the car yeah. but i gotta say you did a nice job matching all the white and making it pretty too the, the brackets the company that makes them it's you know it's pretty they're nice and powder coat they look like the bike and they you know, the, the attachment is it's a great place for them so that was a neat a neat neat change that has worked out well would this be a good chance maybe you can take the outer one off i can just see what that looks like sure. So usually I do two steps. The first one is like I release the the, um, the ratchet and get the get the strap out of the way. It kind of plugs into the back there. Yeah. and it's and it's real stable even just with the front mount. Then you get that out of the way, and so now it's free and clear. So now it's it's loose. It's ready for. And then you know you got to take a, a chance where you can lift it off and lifting it together is easy. And then you can just you know you can just drop it. So there's not there's not a lot of um, you know, lifting, you know, coming off isn't so bad. If, I, if I'm going on, it's the, the opposite, where if I put the brake on the back back wheel, get the front wheel, put it in the basket. So I've got half the weight there. And then the, the flip side of it, which is a little bit more of an effort, but with the, the wheel in the basket. Good job. You know, you got it there, and then you go the reverse. Wow. And so at this point, it's secure, and then I could put the, the thing on. So it's, you know, and this one person, so having the, the battery off. <laughs> that uh, helps a lot. Yes, this is like eight pounds or something. Yeah, I'm not, you know, it's like I, I still, it would have been nicer if I took the, the heavy lock out, but it's like, that's manageable. Mm -hmm. And to get to the, the back one, once you got it in this tray, you kind of stair step it because I can easily pick this. I see wheel up and put it in the basket and put it in the far one tie that one down then do this so i see you so you start at the outer slot it makes yeah. it a little easier that's a good you tip know, and yeah, i guess you don't have to drop it but you know at this point it's just you know find a grip where it's the center of center of gravity there you go and i love that you got your helmet on because that would keep in the handlebar <laughs> well, yeah you can see it <laughs> people always make fun of me you got your helmet on the whole time i'm like you don't know yeah. what it's Loading and unloading bikes can be a risky business. You can see on this one, you know, the bottle cages, we'll see them. You know, I've got the two bottles here aimed back. Yeah. 
I did change out the handlebars on this. I put Jones bars. Oh yeah. You know, so I think I'm a little bit taller. And so riding, when I was riding with the stock bar, I think they were too low and I was putting too much weight mm -hmm. on my hands. And so, and long rides, you know, my palms would kind of tingle. Oh yeah. And so, you know, I needed to kind of lift them up. And I think ergonomically, if you look at your grips, you know, there's sort of the argument, it's like, well, that's my natural hand position is more Versus like angle. forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah, cause the mountain bike is more straight. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, you know, it's like, you know, back at work, you got your ergo mouse. And it's like, well, that's a sort of ergo sure, makes sure. sense. So these guys make a swept bar that also has the riser built in. And a mount for lights or any, I mean, yeah. this is like your accessory bar yeah, up here. Yeah, you could put serious, you know, they, they make, you know, the racing. Your KC lights up yeah, here, you got monster truck. Stuff. And then I swapped out <laughs> to the ergon grips. You know, I love these, these ergon grips are great. And these ones, they're designed for swept bars. It really was a big game changer to have the swept plus these, you know, they, they were, paddle grips on the other ones but it was like you know I'm, I'm well turning just my for wrist. I mean we have this is the stock bike you can see that they've got it's it's fairly firm it's yeah. kind of ergonomic and it's not locking which means you could twist it if you really got hot and right did I, that ever I, happen to I, you? I never you? they never twisted they're good and so you've got the the rest it's just that I you know for me I, I didn't want to turn straight I wanted them to kind of be relaxed and the angle is right plus it gave me the rise too yeah and if you're if you're off road, I'm probably more aggressive in my riding than my wife. And you know, if you're off road and you're on gravel, you want you know you, a lot of control. And boy, that you know, it, it really you really feel stable, which I've appreciated a few times. It looks great. It looks yeah. awesome. Uh, I, I also you mentioned these ones are kind of designed for swept back, but you got one that's. Did you have to cut it or did it come with it, the half? It came like that. So half twist. this yeah. is meant for e-bikes. So this one's a shorty for the twist grip, huh. swept, and then the normal one. So, it, you know, it's like, wow. you know, you had to look because not everybody has that on the shelf. Sure, I had sure. To, I had to order it. But You're it's a good like, researcher. That was that was perfect. So that was a, a big thrill to, to change that. It made it more comfortable it's doing the bottle cages. The other thing, you always tease me, I, I'm into to lights. And so the you know, what I've added on the front and then also on the back, these were, you know, these aftermarket lights. These are lights to kind of be seen. You know, the, the bike already has a headlight. It has a brake light, which is great. Yeah. But if you ride in the neighborhood, you know, you I want the flashers. And sure. so there's some real nice ones, but I forget to turn stuff off. I don't like <laughs> my batteries. And these ones, they, they have a motion detector. So, you know, they, these are turned off too. I'll, oh, there we go. It's, um, yeah, it's the same one on it's, her bike. It's the same one. They turn off after 120 seconds. Huh. But, you know, what happens is, you know, if I wait and let that go off, if you, if there's any kind of movement, mm -hmm. it wakes up and it goes right back into the flashing mode, both on the front and the rear. So hmm. when you're riding, um, it, it makes you feel safer. Um, they, they came with a, it's like kind of a j jumbo rubber band mount that was a strap that you wrap around the seat post and then you clip. Yeah, the holes. And But it would be easy to take it off because you just strap it around and catch the loop or you could bump it and so... And on the post here, you got the rack. Yeah, and so it's like, it, you know, it was... The, and then it's also aiming down to the fender. So sure. the, the mount was wrong. It was easy to, to lose and it was the wrong position. And so what I did... And you can see it on this one. You know, the, the rubber mount is still here. You can see here's the rubber mount and the rubber band is going this way. Hmm. I just took and folded it over and used a rescue tape, which is a silicone stretch tape. And I just taped it to the frame. Wow. So, so if, you know, you could take that off and there wouldn't be any glue or goo. And the, you know, the, the lights are rechargeable. So That's you just, great. you just take them off and, you know, it's like micro, micro USB. USB, charge them up. But on this, you know, this this is the this is the lowest strobe mode. So oh boy. So there's a I think there's a solid, yeah, <laughs> a fast flash and a slow flash. But on the slow flash, it's supposed to last. You know, I've heard 20 to 40 hours. You know, basically mm -hmm. a long time. It's not like every deal. So if you look at this, we've been talking, and it's and it's gone off. If you hit it. <laughs> it wakes back up. Wow. So if you if you start driving, it, it goes. And and they're fairly bright. So you know, you, this is a bright sunny day, so this one's off again. And and if I if I was driving, oh yeah. It wakes up and even in the day, it, Whoa, it's, it's good yeah. visibility. And it's got the flash flash flash. 
flash, yeah. flash, flash. And this is the slowest one. There's a faster one, but it's, <laughs> it's uneven. And so you you notice this a long way away. So wow. I, I, I really appreciate that, especially, you know, we live in a, a retirement area and it's like, you want to make sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're looking out for the other the <laughs> other guys. So, you know, I, I, the uh, the motion lights are nice, you know, to be seen, but you know, it's, it's that's kind of a second purpose. The lights that came with it, work great you know you got the headlight for at night the brake light i really appreciate oh yeah i appreciate having the brake light so you doesn't know, it go bright when you yeah. pull the so it you know when you activate the brake it you know lights and so that's important I, um one of the trails i went out on on anzo borrego and then also by the uh hoover dam some of these old trails where you're going on a railroad trail hmm. um i've been on trails where you go through tunnels and one huh. there was a goat uh Goat Canyon trestle down by San Diego. And to get to it, you know, went through like 10 different tunnels. One of them was a half a mile long. Wow. And it's a long trail and it's <laughs> it's dark. And you know, somebody on the you know, guide said, well, bring a flashlight. And so I brought a little fl handheld flashlight and you know, it's big enough for a locomotive with steam. It's like, you couldn't see anything. It's all black. Did you and, check the schedule before you, you went yeah, into the tunnel? You, you couldn't see anything. But the headlight on the on the bike was bright enough. You know, at least you could have a patch where you were, yeah. were driving. It, it wasn't like it illuminated the whole thing, but it was like, I was pretty grateful at the, at that time. That, that, well, I was kind of wondering, because sometimes the, they get kind of the weenie light that doesn't do a whole lot, but it, it seems like you know they... it, it, it it was you know, it was le le legitimate light you know it, it was enough that was your path you know you know sometimes through use you have to mess around and you know change the adjustment of where it's where it's pointing but it it really helped a lot any difference and you, know, you underappreciate it because the flashlight i thought oh i brought a flashlight i'll be good and it just it just evaporated it was working but it was hmm. it was just so big of room and so dark so at least i could see my path yeah. so i wasn't right onto the road and you're not using one hand to do yeah, the flashlight because yeah, it was like that was it's it was it was dark and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was dark it's like okay how much further you know and yeah. and you know it's an old abandoned thing so there hmm. was places where the rocks had fallen down and oh boy scene was a good thing <laughs> turns out that, that was a that was a feature that i liked that i didn't didn't realize so and the tires were worked okay it, on the it, train tracks came, and yeah you know the, the 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 train tracks were much larger than i thought and so to get them up and over you know i would lift over hmm. and every time you know you know it was i thought that i you know i thought it'd be hitting that bash guard but I, you know i i you know if you look at look at my cranks i'm sure that they're you know there's probably sin, sins on the cranks yeah there you we know, there's a lot of bashing going on with there so it's like and you know but in terms of that plate doesn't look like it took too many hits but no it's sensitive stuff under there sorry that's a good like look at where all the wires are like yeah. i point this out on some of the reviews it's like they're right there you know i was nervous about it but it, it looks like you know i was protecting against something that didn't come hmm. i'm glad that it didn't come but if it did come you know you get a pinch on that cable it would probably be a bad day so anyway, good job especially since we, we go off road quite a bit so anyway that was you know the lights the lights have really done well and the, you know having you know the that change in the angle on these really really made it nice you know and having the two bottles i i really like that i'm always wearing my backpack because i'm kind of minimalist traveling around a lot of times you can get the like camelback kind of thing but then you you know it's nice to have the air like flowing through and kind of cooling you off it's you get the in death valley I had both of these and I had a big bottle back there because it was like you know you just drink and drink and drink kind of can you take the the rear rack off and tell me about this because this was for me i was so used yeah. to topeak and you found this iberia well, stuff and you know during covid a lot of stuff was back ordered you know rad makes racks and stuff like that but it's it's just sort of a a, a basic rack it had the it's you know the pack rack huh? yeah you have the different adjustments and so you you set the height for your bike but you know it it mounted it's it's level mm -hmm. you know to you know, the rad has the brake light the cable wasn't long enough but on amazon you can get a 12 inch cable a adapter that extends it and so it's like well okay i just moved this back and mounted it here huh a little bit of mickey mouse on that but i love that it even had the light mount bracket already i mean yeah. these things look perfect yeah. it's even got the slider you guys so this thing keeps it so if you have panniers connected to the side they don't slide off or yeah. they don't rattle as much and so we've got the racks on both bikes we really like this you know this is a nice size unit but we kind of leave on pretty much all the time um clicks right on 
there's on. And then we've also got the panniers, um, the, uh, one set of saddlebags. So if, you know, if we're at the campsite and we're gonna go to the grocery store and get milk and groceries, you can put both of them on one or share them between the two or something like that. Yeah. You know, most of the time, you know, we haven't had as, as much of a use for that, but these are so convenient and they they hold a lot. You know, it's it's got the reflective on the thing. You know, it's, it's got a strap. You can see all my, my trail mix, my tools, <laughs> yeah. you know, trash from the- And there's the shoulder thing. The shoder strap. If you, you take put, it off. You know, you know, <laughs> consider the timing. <laughs> Yeah. Got it. Just in yeah. case, yeah. And have your COVID mask even out on, even out on the trail, huh. and the bungee on top, you know, and, and the, so <laughs> that might be a dust mask someday, depending on well, where you go. You know, it just goes on and on. It's like there's pockets everywhere. So I've been I've been pleased with that. Did you ever take the charger? Because the charger for the rad bikes, it's like a pound and a half. And if you got really far and you're out of juice, maybe, you, or have you ever run out of batteries? Um, there? I've I've thought about it. Um, I thought well, I've I've worried about. Um, running out of batteries but where we've gone is out in the booties and the, there's so nowhere there, there is there is no plug. where's your fold-out solar panel there, there, <laughs> is, there is no plug we went to the grand canyon and where we camped there you know there's a place where we camp and it was like eight miles to the the rim and oh, then wow. there was 20 miles of you know so we went you know 35 miles and we're worried because like, God, are we gonna have enough charge? But we knew it was gonna be a long time. And so we kept the power down low and we, you know, we kind of used our power yeah. and we came back and we still had half the battery. So, oh, you, know, wow. you know, it's not like we were riding, doing the throttle the whole time, <laughs> but we went a long distance. You told me another story and, um, you know, back to like the features when you were looking at getting bikes and stuff. Uh, this story was about uh, a long trip that you, there were like, it was a big hike and it went through, there was this hill and there's deep sand and it's like you needed yeah. the throttle to kind of get up. And that was what I was thinking. It's like, you don't want to run out of battery. Can no. you tell me that story? Like, so was... in uh, this this spring we went, and, you know, it was just me. I went out to Anzo Borrego. Oh, okay. And um, there is, um, there's some mud, mud caves that are out <laughs> in the desert. And I think it's, you know, six, eight miles out there, but it's, it's, you know, you can't, you know, you definitely couldn't take this and I don't think you can take cars out there. It's Jeeps and the, and the sand was deep. Wow. And so, you know, you're out there and you're trying to find the place that's solid and you think, oh, I got a good spot and then it disappears. And, and then you sink down and, and, and the, in the deep sand without a fat tire, there's no way you could do it. And without the motor, you probably couldn't do it I, I didn't you know reduce the air but I, I had enough where I, I could I could do it and everybody else was in in four-wheel drive trucks and Jeeps wow. and you know you got there and it was a really cool place there was a similar thing on uh, I think it's in Death Valley or maybe in Mojave Desert a lava tube cave oh wow it's you know it was a long a long way out there Jeeps only mm. really cool destination hmm. and that enabled me to get it because you couldn't do it in the RV you couldn't do it in a car I don't have a Jeep I don't want to tow it and so suddenly you're in the game and it was surprising you know if you think well you know is there competition with Jeeps but there wasn't that many you know there's kind of nobody out there they they kind of give you a look it's like are you you know <laughs> were they you know, friendly are you, are you that guy and, and, they, and it wasn't like they beat me by a ton because you know they're they're spinning in the in, huh. the, in the sand too wow so so that was that was quite a delight, you know. Mentally, you have to kind of keep track of how far you're willing to walk, you know. Because well, yeah. it's like if this, you know, if everything crapped out, you know, it's like, well, you know, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll lock it to a tree or something. You know, it's like, you know, you know, yeah, I can walk eight miles back. I, you know, but you know, at that outermost point, you start to think, it's sure, like, well, you know, it's where that extra water bottle comes in handy. Yeah, yeah, and and there's you know a jeep trail on that you know, the mud cave where it was one of these show off Jeep things where there was a, a hill that, you know, it was a 45 degree angle and just even going down it was, hmm. it was, you know, it was like, that was scary, but you know, you could ride down it, up it, I made it, you know, <laughs> a quarter of the way, but then, but even, even walking up it with the, the throttle, you know, I needed the motor to be pushing because it, it was literally steep. But yeah, you know, you got that's it. the story. You, that's the one. I you, remember you, you telling me about yeah, that. It, you know, and it, it was neat. It was neat to be able to go there. And it was, it was just fine. You know, it was hmm. like, okay, it took a little bit longer, but you know, several of the Jeeps, there was husbands and wives that the wives got out. They're like, I'm not going down that with you. And <laughs> they walked down and I walked down and then, you know, at the bottom and you know, it was, you know, so it was like, okay, I wasn't that wow. much different. So. The other thing I'm noticing, it's like, we're out here in a, on a hot day and you can, you've been lifting bikes, you start to get hot and sweaty, but 
uh, with the with the bikes, especially an e-bike, it's like you kind of have this air conditioning effect where you're riding and you get a little bit of breeze on you. So I appreciate that. We got a house in outside of Phoenix. Yeah, you know, it was here the summer before last, and you know, all summer, you know, it would be 105 degrees every day for a month. Wow. And so there was there's several times where I would ride this down to the there's you know bike trails down by the the, the riverbed. And it's like, a, you know, we rode that the other day. It was like a 16 mile loop. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, maybe closer to 18. Wow. And you know, it was 105 and with the bike, you know, with the wind blowing, you know, it was hot, but you're, if you live in there, you're kind of used to the heat. Sure. But with the air blowing, you're sweating. And so you you kind of feel okay, as long as you're going. <laughs> as soon as you stop, it's that hot. You've been pedaling. You suddenly you realize you, you, you're going to glow red. You're a glowing ember. But you know, there's no way you would do that otherwise. You know, it's sort of like again, if, huh. it, if it crapped out, you'd you know you'd want to. You know, it, it, it's in town, so it was it was okay and careful. But when you were done, you wanted to go someplace cool pretty quick. Uh, I was thinking, you know, some of the things I've learned over the years, doing interbike when it was in Las Vegas, or just doing my road trips. You got your arm on the the left window sill, yeah. so I wear these long sleeve shirts a lot. I put on some sunscreen. I got a brim, and you have a, a really special brim for your helmet. It kind of looks it's fun. really common. The, I think it's called a company called Da Brim, and it's this wide brim that you put over your bike helmet. It yeah. gives you like a three or four inch thing, and you know it's it's a big, you know, and and it in 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 Phoenix in this kind of sun it makes a lot of sense. Sure, it's, it's sort of like when you're wearing it though, it feels like dun, 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 uh -huh. you know, the, yeah. you know, the wizard, the, wicked, wicked witch, witch of the with, west, with the big brims. So uh -huh. like, okay, I've got one. I didn't have it today, so I didn't, you know. Looking good, Dad. Do you the got thing. the it was the, it was the style nice point. clothes and stuff. Well, we've it's so fun hearing about all this because you spent months and months, and you know people are kind of trapped at home with COVID. You you figured out so many cool solutions. Is yeah. is there anything else that I that we missed or stories that you want to relay to people about? Maybe the side mirror, real quick. I feel that's something I've noticed. Well, in the neighborhood, we you know, we added added some mirrors and we we're kind of exploring. I think this has turned a little bit, but I, I did the the smaller pop out so I could you know see people behind you. You know, my wife, she's got the one that's kind of from the octopus arm and it's, you know, two different styles. It's, you know, to kind of keep track of, you know, when you're on the city streets, if somebody's coming in our neighborhood, there's, it's a place where it's sort of a resort community. People do golf courses and yeah, golf uh, carts, golf carts. Around. so it's like, Zipping you know, around. Is, is somebody there, you know, it's like you're, you're doing your job and then making sure the other guy does. I really like that job. one. Your and, you know, wrong. another thing, this is just stock, but you were, this is adjustable length and everything. It doesn't cause pedal lock. Like these are all the things I talk about when I review the bikes, but you actually tried it in the soft sand and that, that one Jeep trail where the trail was like this. Yeah. And, you know, I stopped to take a photo and I parked it and used the stand and it, you know, it was, and it, and it sat just fine, which huh. was really surprising because, you know, I was having to, you know, <laughs> you're, you're standing crooked. Oh, the other thing. Okay. So we're out here in the desert. There's cactus like crazy. There's, oh yeah. There's, there's the Chola cactus, <laughs> yeah. where the, you know, teddy bear cactus that drop off. So there's, there's puncture stuff everywhere. And to me, it's like, I, you know, that I think the tires that come with it have some puncture protection and they're good, good tires, blah, blah, blah. But it's like. I, you know, I, I don't ever, ever, ever want to get a flat tire. So I put uh, Tannis Armor makes liners. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, it's a liner. It's kind of like foam or like Nerf material hmm. that, you know, the puncture can go in. But, you know, the, the foam is pretty thick. It's, you know, it's significantly thick on the top and then it comes down and then it has a smaller tube inside. So there's still a tube, but there's a lot of um, insulation around it. So punctures can come in without hitting the tube. So huh. we've got the tennis armor and then um, you, then you put a smaller tube and inside the tube we put, you know, there's different slime and different um, products. The, the product we use is called Flat Attack. Hmm. It was one of the original ones and chose that because it, you know, it's, it, it doesn't, it, it has a five-year guarantee and it's not supposed to evaporate. So oh, some of the different you know, dry out or whatever, some of the different brands dry out and it's like, well, it dries out. You have to add more, add more. And it's like, well, I don't want to keep track of it. I hope it never, you know, my plan is I, I hope it never has to use that. Yeah. But if it does, you want it fresh because, you know, going on these rides, it's like, well, I, you know, and maybe it's crazy. It's like, I you don't have the light going, Dad. I, I, you know, I hit it again. You know, I didn't, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm not packing a, uh, 
in, a pump. I'm not packing a pump. And these fat tires. I, I, and I don't want to change a tire on the things. And the tread is still holding up. Okay, so a couple quick tips. I've gone through tire changing as well, especially on a hub motor. It's mm -hmm. like you need a bunch of tools. Thankfully, these guys have like a quick disconnect for their motor power cables and stuff. A lot of this is actually modular, which is nice if you do break a display or something. But with the tires, the key is to keep the air pressure up enough to where, you know, you're not getting the pinch flat kind of thing going on. And then, you know, avoid the thorns and stuff. And But with this Tannis armor, it's like you get the, the combination of a much thicker, more durable sort of insulator to, to the thorns or glass or whatever. And then you still have some air for that pneumatic kind of a comfort feel. And it just seemed like those worked great, but they do add some weight and some cost. Yep. Were they hard to get on or what was that like? You have to ask the guy at the shop. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's like, no. I'm glad it wasn't I'm, me. I'm, I'm not a do-it-yourselfer. <laughs> yeah. But the, it was the guy at the shop recommended them. And, you know, out here in the desert, you know, they're pretty popular. It, you know, they, they were a little bit, you know, you add it, it was some money in and then you put the other thing and get them on. But, um, you know, they've been kind of bulletproof. They said too, you can run lower pressure when you have them. Oh, I'm on, you know, and, and it, it smooths the ride out. And so smoothing like, the ride out and sand, like you were yeah. talking about, you didn't do it at that time, but it's yeah. like lowering the, the tire pressure spreads out the contact patch and gives right. you. Yeah. And so if you, if, you know, if you were at the beach or something and you knew you were going to exclusively do sand, that would probably be yeah. you know, worth doing it. But it was sort of mixed and it's a long distance. So I've, yeah. I've done several long rides where it's like, okay, you know, can you do this? And you're just looking for the, you know, the firm trail part and not trying to you know hit too many obstacles. I have one other question. Sure. We didn't talk about this before, but you know, these displays, have the USB charging port built into the bottom right here right. and you can kind of tap into the battery that way and I just wondered you know with all do you use like your GPS or phone mount or do you ever tap into it or not I you know so I, I have my phone I've got um, a couple of GPS a Gaia GPS you know so like some of the places where you're way out in the boonies and you know it's it's there's no roads so the Gaia GPS is a good thing where I can find trails and navigate but I just rely on the phone's power. Hmm. I, I guess you could you could charge from there or charge from the battery if your phone was dead. But you haven't yep. had need to? No. Okay, no. well that's cool. I suppose that would be good preparation if you had the, had the charge cable that you do have a, have a source. Sure. Um, but no, I didn't, didn't, think, didn't get to that. The much. other thing I noticed on your helmet, you got the black, they're actually reflective, but yeah. you've got, uh, and it's a nice style thing, I, you know? Yeah, so we put some of the reflective stickers in. It's sort of a black color but it's reflective so at night you know you know because safety is important you know it's yeah. nice if you, you've got good good lights and then the good flashing lights and reflectors you you want as much as you can it's like i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to suffer because somebody else is not paying attention so you, know, you, you, you do what you can closing points for me was you glossed over it but these suspension seat posts i was riding this when we we went on that like 17 18 mile loop just right. yesterday or the day yeah. before and it's feels good i mean yeah. between the suspension fork the heavier bike it almost feels like a motorcycle and that seat post suspension really takes the edge off and you can tell that it does that it, it does move you can see the you know the, the movement points and so you know again if you look at the upright riding position the front shock you know if you if the shock is locked if you take it off and you forgot to unlock it you do feel the bumps more and so with all of that you know on, on even terrain it's it's you know it's pretty comfortable to ride and you're you're sitting up and so if you're out in the country and you're looking at stuff, you can enjoy the view mm -hmm. and you're comfortable and you're in a relaxed riding position. The motor's helping do some of the work. So totally. you, can, you can balance that out. And this is adjustable. This actually has some, you can in the bottom, you can sort of tighten it or loosen it. It's preload and this suspension, yeah. this this portion does too. And so the the weight, I'm just telling because people, you know. And on these these ones, the, you know, the, the suspension, yeah. um, you know, preload. if you if you weigh more than your wife, that you can get a different, uh, spring to put inside of it oh, for your weight. So well, that's cool. It's easy, you know, on the bottom there's a, a screw that holds the, the spring in, and there's different sizes. And hmm. so, you know, based on your comfort or your weight, you can get a stiffer spring. So, so I did change out the spring wow. in mine, and it was easy to do. You take the take the seat post out, take the thing off, and swap out the spring. It was really easy. Huh. Oh, which reminds me here, that was another thing that we oh, did yeah. in terms of slowing down the theft. It, it came with quick release, uh, the seat post clamp was a quick release. 
you know, these are unattended a lot and to try to at least make it a little bit harder. I put yeah. a, a tooled clamp. So it's like, if you had a bike tool, you can take this off. Yeah. But you know, if somebody's, you it's know. It's a good, it's a $150 for, yeah, for the Yeah, if somebody picking. flicks the thing <laughs> yeah. and then your seat's gone. Yeah, you know, that's, 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 uh, you mentioned um, it's changing the spring. Dad, do you mind sharing how much you weigh? Yeah, I'm close to 200, so I About weigh 200. More, more than you. Uh, more than me, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm riding the bike a lot, keeping yeah. me fit. I got to say, um, I mean, so this was totally fun for me. I was hearing about this because I haven't been back to the States for like a year and a half, and I've been seeing these pictures and stuff, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I want to let you know I'm going to post, and I'll link to this in the forums back at electricbikereview.com. I'll link to every single one of these accessories so you can kind of mix and match if you want to get so some of these things I'd never even heard of, like that that bash plate on the bottom and these this you know cup holder bracket on the front i just think this is great and by the way this is not a sponsored video none of these accessories or bikes were were given to us for free my dad just picked what he thought would be the best for him and his wife and i thought it would be fun to share because i keep seeing the pictures and hearing the stories but putting together the the list back in the forums the idea is you can find the exact items and some of those are amazon links so there's some affiliate commission there but uh, feel free to post your own great accessories too. You know, maybe there's a new version that works even better or, or you've got a completely different bike build and you want to share about it. That's what the forums are for. I try to keep it really ad limited. In fact, the vast majority of electric bike reviews I've done have been for free. Um, we've taken, you know, kind of a service charge on some of them, but my goal is to be as objective and open as possible and, and have everyone feel included. It's not like one bike is objectively better than another. It, it, they're, they're all pretty cool and uh, just have different use cases. So I hope this helps. I hope you've enjoyed it. Dad, was there any other thoughts or things you wanted to add before think, we go for a ride? Yeah, I think that's it. Let's go for a ride and, you know, have, have some fun. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. Sure. Oh, yeah. Amazing how well these things climb. And this whole trail is uphill. I'm just sitting down. Got my assist level three here. Doing pretty good. Good job, Dad. Yeah. Putting that skid plate to the test. It shows the straight up trail. <laughs> And this whole thing assist level three one-handed wow <laughs> Woo! that's look pretty at, impressive look at that huh you were able to do that one <laughs> like, okay. i saw you getting squirrely back yeah. there yeah slowing down it's like uh oh 
<laughs> this is when you want to make sure you have some good disc brakes for the ride home. Yeah. Well, you appreciate the fat tire for the stability. Yeah. And the motor to help push. It's pretty forgiving. It's a nice, yeah. nice setup. Yeah. Thanks for taking me out here. Yeah, it's a great disc. Nice to go out and have some fun. Yeah. Tire, eat, tire eaters with all the, the knobs that fall off. Uh oh. <laughs> That's where it's like, okay, I want the liners. I want the thing. Because around here, those things are everywhere. Those, those especially the cholos that just drop off. Huh. Um. <laughs> Thanks for the little bit of fauna tour here. Yeah. And I think you were, we, you told me about these, how like the parts fall off and then they grow into a whole new plant. Yeah, they do. Then, but it's really easy to pick those up. We had our dog and until he got one caught to her, you know. It's, it's oh no. Not much fun. It's a sad day. Yeah, so those are you gotta watch for. <laughs> well, this one didn't didn't make it. Mm. Kind of see the insides of uh, these cactus. They uh, Some of these are like 100 years old, right? They, the big ones are really old. And the saguaros have those, uh, the wooden inside. And it, if you look at it, it, it's sort of like a series of tubes, each of those separate round things. So. Yeah, you see the old ones that have been eaten into, and you think, well, how can it, how can it stay out? But they're pretty funny, and they're very heavy because they're full of water. You really want them to fall in. Some of them turn into the birdhouse. Yeah, the... the birds like it. You can see that one that they've eaten into, but it's, it's still going strong. It's a nice trail. Yeah, it is neat. We camp right out there. Oh. We'll have to keep going. We'll see the campground. Cool. I'll show you that fast.